Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ali Oguz Dirios is uh, based at Billikent University, the Department of International Relations. Uh, and actually, let me move to the other microphone so that Miriam can do the PowerPoint. Okay. Uh, and we have to plug this in. See. Uh, Mr. Dirios graduated in 2002 from the University of Virginia with a BA in Foreign Affairs. He holds a master's degree in International Affairs and Public Policy from Bilkin University, as well as a PhD, uh, or he's currently a PhD candidate at the same university. Dr. Dirios is currently a researcher and teaching at Bilkin University, and is also a contributor to the Middle East Analysis Magazine, the monthly publication of ORSAM, the Center for Middle Eastern Strategic Studies. The topic of his paper is Energy Security, Conflict, and Peace. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a very, very warm welcome for Mr. Ali Oguz Dirios. Thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm very honored to address you during this prestigious conference, and uh, I'll try to abide by the time limits. And I would also like to thank Professor Chaur Erhan, who's leaving, for giving such a nice geopolitical presentation. Um, I will be looking into energy security as a potential for confrontation and cooperation, and we'll dwell into the geopolitics, which Professor Erhan did, but also into institutional cooperation and the renewable future. Um, this presentation is based on my recent uh, comparative review of three books, Michael Clare's Rising Power, Shrinking Planet, Sanam Hagigi's Energy Security, and Robert Evans's Fueling Our Future, which was published by the Center of Foreign Policy and Peace of the East Sandora Major Peace Foundation, and they're all azimuth journal. Uh, energy products are often uh, traded as uh, commodities, yet their extraction process and access to the markets can be very political. Th then the following two questions come to mind. Is energy security in foreign policy a goal or an instrument? And is energy conflictual or cooperative in international politics? Energy security is a broad concept that requires interdisciplinary approach. And among other things, it could, be, it could mean the physical security of critical infrastructure, as well as the notion of supply security. Either way, it can be a source of conflict and or cooperation, and it is one of the emerging challenges of the 21st century. Uh, the basic problem for consumer countries is how to ensure the con continual access to secure uh, and uninterrupted energy at affordable prices while access to secure markets is the main concern of producer countries. Experts writing about energy security often see increased international cooperation and development of new technologies as general solutions. Energy literature does not necessarily, is not necessarily the same as international relations theories, but general concerns are often similar to the elements of IR theories. For instance, viewing energy as a security issue and a geopolitical game, as we have just seen, basically, uh, is, um, and a game dominated by uh, nation states, is in a way similar to IR's realism, or the view that secure access is best ensured by intergovernmental, institutionalized cooperation has a more neoliberal, I'm talking about IR theory, neoliberal flavor while energy to be seen as a main field in and of itself, that's basically green theory, especially seeing environment as a main field in and of itself. And um, basically also focusing as such on human security, transcending borders. I would like to dwell further to the geopolitics, institutional cooperation, and renewable future here on. Um, Let's begin with the first one, energy geopolitics in a smaller planet. To begin with, energy security as a security issue. Geopolitics are at the center stage where nations with increasing population are competing over scarcer resources. And uh, while Western multinational companies are still dominant players in this game, uh, increasingly non-OECD countries and their national energy companies play a larger role in the oil and gas markets. The new seven sisters, sometimes uh, 
referred to are the uh, Gazprom, Saudi Aramco, CNPC of China, Petrobras, the National Iranian Oil Company, the PDVSA of Venezuela, Petronas. Sokar of Azerbaijan is another example of a prominent national energy company. For nation states, the concern about competitive access to diminishing resources is particularly due to the rise of powers such as China and India, which have a combined population of over 2 billion people, and also the BRICS, among others. Now, an example of geopolitical concerns and energy security can be seen with uh, um, the case of uh, a Chinese oil company, the CNOOC. Their bid to acquire an American oil company, the UNOCAL, was being blocked by the US Congress due to strategic and security concerns. This was an example in Michael Clare's book. Um, with scarcity, a new energy order is dividing countries between energy surplus countries and the deficit countries. Fossil resources are shrinking. And as uh, Professor Erhan highlighted, those that remain are concentrated in the Middle East, North Africa, and Central, Central Asia. And as such, are of geostrategic significance. Uh, and climate change is only exasperating the problem. Events such as the uh, tropical cyclones or Hurricane Katrina um, that are altering the steady flow of oil does not help either. And it is interesting to observe, in spite of all this tension, that uh, India and China, especially India, has a tendency to rather cooperate at least at this point, with China. Now, this is a contrast to some countries' use of energy as a political tool, and or the competition over the Caspian region, which is sometimes termed as a 21st century energy version of the 19th century imperial great game. Perhaps potential conflicts can be mitigated by a culture of diplomatic uh, cooperation in an ideal world, but much effort and confidence building is needed for cooperation instead of competition. And this is where cultural diplomacy can play a role. And the current global energy landscape is one that is uh, coming closer to um, uh, being potentially confrontational. As things are standing today, though, it is unlikely that confrontations between major powers, i.e. China and the USA, would, uh, would emerge in the near future, but regional powers, that could be different. We've just seen Professor Aran's presentation. And the open access of the Strait of Hormuz is critical to the supply of oil to the global market. And it can be an issue of potential standoff between the United States and Iran, and as well as the other countries of the region. Such events could be warning signals that energy is becoming increasingly increasingly a political tool rather than a market commodity, and thus the global order becoming more conflict-prone. As such, energy security is a, is a goal to achieve, and yet many countries continue to use it as an instrument of foreign policy. Increased collaboration is a possible way to avert catastrophe, yet collabor collaboration and cooperation don't emerge easily. Potential access to resources can be conflict prone unless institutionalized cooperation is realized. Yet such institutionalized cooperation is not automatic either. Again, a role possibly for cultural diplomacy. Um, now I would like to dwell further into, into the institutionalized cooperation. This brings us to how energy security can be best, arguably, provided by institutional cooperations. Certain writers suggest that um, international organizations or political unions such as the EU could legalize and institutionalize cooperation as a way to ensure energy security. The concept of institu institutionalizing and cooperation is also, it has a new liberal flavor in terms of IR theories. And um, in terms of inst institutionalized cooperation, we have to bear in mind though that the EU itself is not monolithic when it comes to energy security. Accounts describing the EU are very complex. You have green papers, white papers, and one can be very easily lost in the process. 
To establish institutionalized framework, the EU should first develop a coherent common foreign and security policy from within. And uh, when the issue is in energy security, unfortunately, one can hardly speak about a common policy. Projects such as the Northern Stream allow uninterrupted access of Russian gas to Germany, effective, effectively bypassing EU countries of Central and Eastern Europe. Hence, it wouldn't be too unfair to say that European common uh, foreign security policy, in the case of energy security, that is, is rarely common, seldom secure, foreign to its own members, and hardly a policy. And things are getting more complex now that there are 27 individual members, plus maybe Croatia. Uh, European energy security should eventually be harmonized from within in order to have durable relations with supplying countries. Legal framework of establishing market mechanisms is sometimes portrayed as one of the best ways to achieve energy security. This focuses on the facet of energy as a commodity rather than a strategic resource. As such, energy security is a goal to be achieved rather than an instrument of foreign policy. And um, I'm not going to go too much into the EU's origin as uh, the Eurotom and the coal and steel community, but aside from the EU, there's also the WTO, the IEA, and the Energy Charter Treaty, which is particularly important for the trade and investment and transit of energy. However, the ECT has many um, countries that are consumers, but very few supplier states. And more supplier states should be party to it. This is uh, uh, kind of illustrating the current EU policy, but and um, for the uh, for um, a sustainable uh, for the sustainable energy is the third party I would like to talk about energy security. Now there ha this has the potential to be a realistic solution, yet. The time frame ranges from 10 to 50 years, that is 5-0, and that is beyond the time frame of most decision makers. Um, here I would like to mention why it's important to have renewables. Uh, this is from Robert Evans's book. Uh, interestingly, only 17, that is 1-7% of crude oil extracted at the wells, oil wells. Only 17% 17, 17 of that can do useful work at the wheels of your car. Now that's a lot of wasted energy. And um, climate change, again, is another important factor why we need to address, because it addresses human security and uh, as opposed to uh, just um, security of the nations. To conclude, we have, uh, I I'm, I'm would like to finish, because I've been told with the time, we have had some different insights on energy and increased cooperation and development of new technologies are seen as a general solution. But overall, energy itself has the potential to be conflictual and cooperative, depending on the context and the way different actors approach a particular situation. While ideally energy security is, uh, should be a goal to be achieved, it is very often an instrument, and that is making cooperation more difficult. Again, the standoff in the Strait of Hormuz uh, can be seen as um, one of such examples. And to conclude, there is an overall international consensus on how important international cooperation is, but yet sometimes consensus itself is not enough. You need both leadership from the top and grassroots movements from the bottom. Thank you very much. These are, this is the publication and the three books, Michael Clare, Sanamanagigi, and I would like to thank you very much for, for uh, listening.